In that case, wake me, wake me in a few hours. Leon just lays back on the tree branch. It's just to say, he's not very focused when he's maintaining himself. It's not as if he is awake. He is actually focusing on himself. He can just hold a little bit of late conversation. All right. And if there is uh, no other role play to take care of, then we can proceed. You awaken to another cold morning, unusually so here for this time of year. The brisk wind sees you off down the road, but that's the greatest of your troubles. For two full days, you suffer no interruption on your travels. Perhaps the druids were distracted by Lamas. And uh, that is on the calendar there, the 14th of Pashwal, free day. Lamas is a druidic holiday, uh, and uh, certainly uh, Fargus would know this. Uh, like how the necromancers all derive power from the Lich King, so too do all druids in some form or fashion derive power from the High Druid. When the High Druid is strong, druids in general tend to be strong and capable of many great things. When the High Druid is weak, or worse, non-existent, uh, druids uh, sort of fall off the power scale and uh, aren't really heard from much, if at all. This high druid who currently oversees the Wildwood is very strong. Uh, as a result, uh, not all druids, but every druid that treats this as a holy day to celebrate and perhaps renew their connections uh, with, the, with nature. But uh, thankfully, thankfully you don't encounter any problems. Perhaps because of that holiday. <laughs> uh, Most likely. But also, maybe there's no more enter caps around. Whatever the case, you come across a significant chunk, or you rather, you cross a significant chunk of the Wildwood until you run into a literal roadblock. Littering the highway are the remnants of multiple wagons, along with several dead oxen and nine humanoid corpses, all nude. Two logs block either end of the scene, presumably so no one could escape the bloodbath. The air reeks of blood and decomposing flesh, and Dirk is full of curses as he brings his horses to a halt. Okay, red alert. First of all, how old does this scene seem to be? Um, I... All right. Uh, well, I would say that's a wisdom-related skill check. Uh, using 1d20 plus wisdom modifier plus your level plus a relevant background. Well, considering Thomas certainly has seen some things in the guard, he probably would have seen the odd bloodbath as well as as well as like burned caravans and the like. Sure. May maybe he can he can just remember a particular incident where he already knew. Oh, that was two days ago, and it looks exactly like this. Right. Sure. That's uh, a. Ooh. D20 plus my level plus my wisdom plus my background. It's a good thing you folks weren't traveling any faster, because if you were here yesterday, you also would have been caught in this. Oh. Um, Forgus will uh, sort of search the area and try to find out, find out how many actually were here. All right. Uh, you can go so. ahead and make that tracking wisdom-based skill check that you made at the campsite. Right? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> um, hmm. There we go. This looks like an absolute slaughter. Uh, two dozen, uh, you would guess, uh, I'm judging by humanoids, uh, laid in wait here and uh, quickly ambushed this, uh, this caravan. Uh, there do seem to be some prints along with blood of people as they attempted to run and flee, but you don't find any bodies along that aren't by the highway. Those nine. Right. Um, um, do I see what kind of creatures they were, or were they just humanoids? Hold on. You would, you would think that they are humanoids, uh, judging by, like, remnants of, like, a broken, like, arrow haft, uh, that mm -hmm. they are capable of using weapons. All right. An arrow half that might be recognized as one we have encountered before. Mm. It, it, the the one we had encountered before might still be sticking in our in our wagon, <laughs> so we can no, easily compare. No, no, it doesn't look the, the the same. There's also like a uh, a long sword like embedded in a tree here. 
like a heavy club uh, that was probably left behind there. Uh, a few remnants to suggest that uh, some battling did take place within the trees, but this is more of an absolute slaughter. What uh, what size are these trees that have been sort of knocked over on the path? They are massive logs, uh, very large ones, and because the uh, trees nearby the highway themselves haven't been chopped down, uh, and uh, Fargus can find the tracks as well, these massive trunks were dragged out of the forest. Which so someone... leads, leads to some sort of confusion then, because <laughs> how in the hell did the log appear behind these guys? And have in front of them, fast used... enough to make them stop, sort of. Have to have used magic, or some maybe some kind thing. of troll have uh, done this. Yeah. Do they appear to be like giant troll monster tracks dragging this thing? Do not appear to be giant troll monster tracks, just uh, humanoid uh, shaped uh, things and shoe and boot prints. There's no nice. rope or anything tacked around the log? No rope. Alright. I assume they used magic then. Um, something Leon would like to do is basically climb up a tree that is not on the ground, um, try, and, try and get a good vantage point and try and have a look around to see, like, is there a clear signs where there might have been some, you know, someone else might have camped nearby, or is there clear signs of, for example, where these giant trees came from? Okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, use 8, this would be a wisdom-based skill check, 1d20 plus your wisdom modifier plus a level plus a relevant background. You know, he spent a, he spent a lot of time, you know, watching watching over roads, trying to find ways to survive, trying to keep trying to find what new ways to um, track people moving across main roads. Sure. Not very good. Uh, Leon uh, is just too unfamiliar with this particular vantage point. It's so difficult to get a clear view uh, in the massive canopy of the wild wood. There's just so many trees and leaves and bushes everywhere. He can't effectively get a good idea of the situation, other than to say that what he sees confirms what Fargus suggests. These logs were dropped here by magic. Right. Uh, how so, close are we to Foghaven at the moment? Uh, you're Five still... Days? Uh, no, you're still uh, maybe like, a, I would say you're, uh, you're three days out. No, three I days see. out of Foghaven. Uh, anyhow, um, Fargus will have a look around the area for signs of any ne necrotic magic, if he can find it. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and make a, presumably a wisdom-based skill check using your uh, oh. undead hunter background. You yep. sense Leon. <laughs> other, than, other than me. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, that's two days out of Foghaven, not three. Okay. Since I was uh, warned about the Lich King having influence over there. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, Fargus doesn't sense that uh, there's any uh, necromantic uh, power radiating from anyone other than Leon. <laughs> All right. Hey, he's not radiating very much. I'm not using my power. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, so? the, the well has already been poisoned. He has, like, the tint and residue in his mind, so... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not radiating at the moment. I will That's, right. That's right. It's it's more along the lines of because you failed the skill check, uh, your personal bias is coming into play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, regardless, it seems like there's no one here, and uh, you're going to sort of think about how to actually remove these locks so we can continue on. Because they seem to be blocking the path pretty strongly. The Does he think he could use magic to move them? Mage Hand would be far too weak to uh, to push yeah. these aside. At only half your strength, there's no way a Mage Hand could just slap these logs. So, h how big of a log are we talking about? Like, what kind of diameter? So, d just so I can picture it better. Tree size. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... You know, there's always times in a session I know when a player will ask me a question I had never even thought to consider, and I'll just, just, just go, ha! <laughs> just could the logs be rolled? Are they, like, round enough and light enough? That... They, they are certainly round enough, uh, but in regards to lightness, it would be a challenge for all five of you, plus Leon, plus the horses if they were attached with ropes to roll these things. Oh, it might take God. the entire day to push these yeah. logs out of the way so the wagon can move. 
Well, so be, there's these be, damn things here. This would be a day project. These logs are so thick and massive that all five of you, plus Dirk, plus the horses, it would be an entire day affair. Let's like, it wouldn't there. take all day, but you would have to spend so long recovering your muscles. Well, maybe it would be simpler to not clear the road, but instead build a second, slightly smaller road, just uh, by cutting down trees and oh. making a small... <laughs> no, it's a salmon fire! Well, we could, I was thinking about a different fire. plan, but this sounds good. Uh, Vargas will actually look around for a different path to take. We could sort of burn the forest down. Uh, maybe an hour <laughs> looking around the area for um, could, um, some kind of opening or something. So we can go around the trunk. All right, that could be an hour-long project. For would Vargas. would uh, would, uh, yep. would it be possible this year, maybe maybe to make a ritual? Because he does have another portion of acid, and if he could just get enough acid, perhaps he could could dismantle the middle of these things enough so he could part them in the middle and sort of easily push them out to the sides. Well, you know, that's what ten uh, rather than sort of. So, yes, you know. that would certainly be possible. You could use a ritual combined with acid arrow. That would take 1d4 quarter hours to uh, create, and then I would call for you to make a roll using your magical background. And of course, you would expend yeah. the acid arrow spell. Yeah. I'd offer to like do some mechanical stuff to see if there's any way of this helping dismantle or to help point out weak spots that'll help make it move quicker. Uh... In regards to the mechanics of the wagons themselves. Well, that's certainly a good idea. While uh, while Hiram is focusing on the on the actual logs, some people need to focus on clearing out like the bits of the wagons that are still in the middle of the highway, so that Dirk can drive through this once the logs are melted. Mm -hmm. Sure. So right. Hiram will begin to 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 melt the logs, mostly just the the main fibers in them, so that they sort of become some soft and malleable in the middle, so they can easily be be parted. Yeah, and sort of split through. Um, right. So that is, uh, that is uh, yeah, I mean, he will... 1d4 quarter hours. Stand it's basically begin to move the glass-like substance over them, wrap them in it, move it through, sort of weaving it back and forth, uh, each time sort of the wood growing more and more weak and malleable. And, uh, and it says 4d what? See, so, hold on. 1d4. It would be roll a one d four. This is to determine how many quarter hours it takes for you to cast yes. this ritual. Okay, oh, so, in so a it half takes hour. half an hour. All yeah. right, Thomas, Leon, are there any things that you two would like to do during this? Um, well, to assist Tempus. Yeah, we're we're gonna help clear the road and everything. Yeah, Thomas certainly has the exact perfect tools to deal with with wooden <laughs> contraptions. Yes. So, 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 there's, no, there's no need for you three to roll. It's uh, It'll just be time-consuming, but you can certainly uh, get a lot of work done on it in a half hour. Uh, Fargus there, uh, won't, it won't take him the full hour either. After a half hour, there is a smaller dirt road off the highway. It's about a mile back and it's a very roundabout path. It would add an extra two days travel time. All right. So we do have an alternative, but it's yes. not really. It, it's that good. it's not convenient. It's dirt. You would end up staying in the wildwood longer, and uh, it's much harder to nope. see out there than it is in the highway. <laughs> <laughs> but it does exist. You're basically trying yeah. to find a dirt path that's so, convenient enough for the wet wheels to travel. Without breaking. Yeah. So if we don't have any other alternatives, basically that's an option. Uh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, All right. So Fargus will return after finding the road. Mm -hmm. All right. I suppose we. Yeah. So I let's see how good. I want you to right? roll a one d twenty plus your intelligence modifier plus your level right. plus your magical background. All right. That is a good modifier. I have then. Let's, uh, let's hope this goes well. That's pretty damn good. Ah, uh, uh, that's great. Uh, in that case, uh, you're able to describe it. You achieve the exact effects that you desired, Manakai. Sure. Uh, moving the acid back and forth, basically on on the things that are covering the road, sort of swirling them almost like like a, like concentrated waves, moving them through this as as sharp little needles that remove all the strong points of the wood, making it just sort of soft and sponge like. So it can easily just be kicked to pieces, uh, as he as he corrodes it with his uh, with his magic, uh, seemingly very again striking it very, very sort of point, special points of it 
the hard points, uh, making it soft, and then simply, you know, kicking it to the pieces after the half hour. Uh, Dwolf Hero for, Man has such an yeah. effective command of magic in this situation that he is able to just melt the log without melting the highway beneath. Hmm. Good. Now, uh, you folks who are cleaning up the wagon bits there, you do end up finding uh, an arrow similar to uh, one of the ones that Fargus found. Uh, and it has a small note scroll on it. I don't have a handout for this. Just other than... The Whispering Ravinger sends his regards. Do not oppose us, or this will be your fate. That seems oddly directed at us in particular. It might Thomas be. will exclaim to us Thomas, nobody uh, in particular. Tempest will ask for the note just to read it over a couple of times. And then he'll stash it in a specific pocket. Pocket number four. Pocket number seven, actually. Anyway, uh, after an hour, as a hero recovers uh, and everyone else finishes moving the uh, the rest of the wagon pieces, the highway is cleared, and you are able to continue your journey. Good. Dirk, though, uh, he's on edge, and. Uh, <laughs> As you folks pass by the butchered caravan, no longer is he smiling. There's only a grim, fervent look in his eyes. Perhaps it's the nearness of mortality at seeing so many other travelers. Perhaps he had a few acquaintances among those who had slain. We've lost so much time, he mutters. Those bandits could find us at any moment. Well, Dirk might be an oracle. For as the sun sets... The trees okay. bustle with activity. Eight figures quickly approach your wagon, and I'll actually put you towards the battle map here, uh, though uh, you this is not immediately a combat situation. And uh, you can tire. place your, you can place yourselves in that center grid square. This one? Yes. Tire of this damned forest. Hey, guys, look, there we go. Yes. Uh. Eight figures quickly approach your wagon, all human, wielding a mix of clubs and bows. One of them separates from his companions and addresses you all. Just one today. Brave lot you are. Or oh, stupid. These roads are owned by the Whispering Ravinger, and if you'd like to leave with your lives, you'll have to leave everything you own. Oh, the Whispering Ravenger. I've heard wonderful things about him, haven't we, chaps? Well, as the last corpses we found were naked, it seems that they complied and didn't fare very well. No, they offered resistance, so we took their belongings from them. Uh, just, just to ask, though, are you asking us for a toll, then? <laughs> he, he looks puzzled and, like, looks around the others and looks back at him and says, Yeah! Yeah, I think I am asking for a toll. Ah, fancy that. Uh, so, uh, now, just pardon me, a bit absent-minded. Uh, who is this Whispering Ravenger? We've had wonderful things about him. I'd, I'd quite like to know who I'm paying. You try to smart-mouth me. No, no, no. I am being incredibly honest with you. I am being... Uh, see, you can see my bare hands. I am just wondering who I am. I'd like to know who I'm paying. You're going to have to make a charisma-based skill check using your trickster of the dice background. This will be a hard uh, skill DC. Okay. 1d20 plus 5 plus 3. Ugh. He uh, lifts his heavy club menacingly and points it at Tempest and says, Everything you own, smart mouth. Right now. Guys, engage combat. Uh, for Fargus will say... We will not be intimidated by fire. Uh, Tempest raises his hand. And the cast rotation. All right, sure. Late. Go ahead and <laughs> set the door, you know, the advantage that Griffin God got on fire. Yeah. Okay. Well, that six is nullified as combat is initiated. Uh, Hot headed Fargus has decided to start things. Everyone rolls initiative. Sorry. 
<laughs> that was just the spell I wanted you to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said he was doing. Ruination. Can I be put in initiative somehow? I, I don't know. I'm thinking about it, and I've decided... <laughs> that you don't really deserve initiative. <laughs> oh. Tempest, we must fight for initiative. We're both on the same level. What do we do? We just have to re-roll again so you get the higher D20. That's no, no, we'll, If two we'll, players roll the same initiative, they must battle to the death for it. We, we, we will use the higher dexterity modifier. Yeah. I think I win. Yes. I have dex, but you have more. I wish I had dex. Alright. Fargus, fittingly enough, we will not be intimidated. You act first. Yep. Uh, and he's, he has uh, had some um, history with the forest bandits, and he doesn't really like them very much. These are two mobs of three mooks each. Alright. And he casts Ruination on everyone. Alright. Well, that's right. <laughs> yeah, except for your That hits. <laughs> Seven damage to everybody. Let's see here. Is that like a per battle thing, or...? Yeah, it's an encounter spell, basically. Oh, right. That's really good. Yeah. Um, that's really good. And... Those are the damage things impacted. That's your standard action? Uh, yes, and my free action was basically to say we are not intimidated by effects. And you're not moving <laughs> And move action, I'm just gonna stay right here. Tempest, oh, yeah. it's your uh, turn. Uh, <laughs> Tempest just he has his hand up just to go, what? And he's just like, he's, like, <laughs> he's got his hand on the bottle of the top, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> just put that back in. <laughs> <laughs> There is, there is an awful sigh. That's his quick action. Is uh, and what for, for you said, no idea what you were about to do. No. <laughs> Stop the bad barbarian with the wrench. <laughs> All right. And does the invasive strike on him? Tempest in the forest with the wrench. Plus <laughs> five, plus one. That is a hit. One d eight plus. Five and wait, this is a surprise round? No, they are not surprised. Uh, I don't think so. Eleven damage. Okay, that is just enough to stagger him. And I had a bottle of wine for you. <laughs> Leon, it's your turn. Well, you know, we there, there's, a, there's a lot of things around us. I don't really like this. You know what? I'm gonna do this. Okay. As I'm, as as Leon's going to raise his sword into the air, once again gathering his dark power and lightning starting to crackle from it. Let's see if he can strike someone. He's going to start with. He's going to put prim the first primary target him. Okay. That Natural is 20. most certainly a hit. Yes. Uh, I'll make my secondary target then. Um, this mob. All right. That is not a hit. And since it's not even, I cannot continue the chain. Well, I think you should try that again. Oh. That's not a hit, but it is an even now. Oh. Yep, so I get to continue the chain, I'll go on to the archer. Alright. <laughs> I'll go, uh, do you want to go really nice That one or the- That's a wicked combo. The, the, the rogue, uh, uh, the rogue would, uh, have a minus two to your attack roll. He is firmly entrenched in cover. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go after these mooks. With okay. the next one, then. That is certainly a hit on the mooks. Oh, in that case, I'll go after, I'll go after the last ones as well. All right. The last guy. <laughs> yeah, that hits him too. <laughs> well, we see how this now, is going. Oh, don't roll three. That with Earth strength. <laughs> so now, um, that oh, is 17 or 30. So it's half damage against anyone I missed. Uh, against people I crit, it's 34 damage. <laughs> That is beastly. As, as Leon <laughs> raises his sword into the air, crackling of lightning, gathering all his power together, slamming the blade into the ground as a shockwave of lightning scatters in every direction, striking only the people he hates. We're doing mental <laughs> Kill them with hatred. Also, of course, all the spellcasters, you all feel the natural chaotic energy flowing out of me. Uh. 
I yeah. tried it again, huh? Yeah. Hmm. It is always there. It seems. So sad. Well, uh, the rogue is left alive. He is very much daggered. Hiram's well. turn. Uh, the rogue has two hit points. Yeah, uh, that what means he's dead. dead. <laughs> oh yes, the fighter is still alive as well. Yeah. But the the rogue is dead though, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will not allow him to. <laughs> Just dead. <laughs> the rogue's dead. This, this is well, barbarian's dead. dead. Rogue's dead. Thomas's turn. <laughs> this fighter oh, looks very much alone now. <laughs> So I offered you wine! <laughs> Thomas, I you didn't offer shit! Of <laughs> <laughs> Thomas definitely approved of this offensive approach, as he knows that bandits, especially those who think they are serving some glorious leader, are rarely intimidated. But since there's only one left, all Thomas will do is glare at him and assess the situation. <laughs> 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 I wonder what to do. Yeah, there's a... <laughs> He'll just look around and then glare at the bandit fighter. This this escalation die ain't region one. It's his turn. He's fucking booking it. He runs screaming in terror about <laughs> monsters <laughs> who are traveling the highway. You can have it! You can I want to kill you! <laughs> Damn it, uh, tell all yeah, you. Yeah, some no, sparks he, and... Uh, he rolled his surrender dice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he is definitely a mook, so you can certainly give pursuit and strike him dead. All right, I'll do that. We are not letting this one get to walk, get walk, 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 walk. Boom! Disintegrated. <laughs> walk, 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 walk. Yeah, I, I don't need to hit him. I just need to. <laughs> well, that, that, that from, you can have see, him more. <laughs> see that uh, that wouldn't kill him, and uh, although that combined oh. with Fargus's miss damage would actually deal enough. He only had five hit points. Yes, your combat is over. I missed him? Oh. You did miss him. Nah, just Leon, you, you hit him. <laughs> after releasing that whole storm of energy, Leon just blinks and kind of like looks around like a little bit dazed, like he didn't quite realize what he just did. <laughs> well, <laughs> just a good reflexes. That, that was certainly effective. Impressive you know, magic. Fergus, I was going to say, I had that one, but, uh, well, give me a second, it starts passing down the leader's pockets. <laughs> They uh they don't have anything of worth with them other than uh, the heavy club, some uh some light armor basically. The leader doesn't have anything with him. No, he's, he's not going to take any of that. No, just he's looking for any notes or coins or things. No notes, no coins. Let's keep moving. Negotiating with bandits, it's always useless. Yes, they. Are. I was wanting to figure it's... out who the Ravager was. Ah well. He's some kind of bandit leader, who cares? Oh, Alright, you, you, you guys can uh, look back at the world map now. <laughs> that was quick! Oh yeah, one second, I need to roll recharge on that lightning! Yes, you do need to roll a recharge. Oh yeah! That is... The 16 plus recharge. Yes, so that does not succeed. It's a pretty powerful spell, admittedly, so... Alright. Yeah. Alright. <sighs> well... Uh, Leon, Leon looked to Tom, Thomas. But th th thanks for the advice. Of bouncing the lightning off of that. I think oh. that made it twice as effective. Yes. Well, it was uh, certainly effective. time drudges by afterwards, uh, and you folks do endeavor to put a bit more distance. Dirk is just more concerned now that all of these displays of raw power will just attract more attention to the group. <laughs> he thinks he's gotten more in over his head, not because of the fights, but because of who he's hired. <laughs> and he looks uneasy. Yeah, on the bright side, we're defending him well. Yeah, you're yes. not dead. Yes. That must help. You're not being eaten by a giant spider. <laughs> hey, Time drudges by. That ain't keep you alive. From yes. cold winds to blue skies, and now a gentle rain. Today's the last <laughs> day Dirk expects you'll be in the Wildwood. Uh, we've made good time in spite of it all. Tonight, men, will be in Foghaven. Warm food, uh. cold ale, a hot bath. And a nice bed. Let's go. We, we should be on oh, our guard. I've heard much good of the halls of Farkhaven. Yes, we should be on our guard in the town. Yeah, I am mine, they call it a mine. Well, uh, <laughs> well, while you folks are talking about that, I would like you all to make wisdom skill checks. That's 1d20, plus your wisdom modifier, plus your level, plus a relevant background. You five are in a forest, proceeding cautiously on the lookout for danger. Convince me how a background would help you notice something here. 
Well, well okay. You I protect the forest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can go with that. <laughs> you did a bad job. You, you know, set on fire. You know, I'm a survivor. You know, my yeah. character's a survivalist scout. I'm used. To, I'm used to trying to survive on my own. You know, in wilderness, trying to avoid danger. All right. Smokey the bear is very upset with you, Gogur. Yeah. I put out the fire. I, I uh, <laughs> I have. Uh, I have been watching out for protectors of the forest quite a lot. <laughs> in my time here. Okay. <laughs> what is that you? Yeah, <laughs> I've I've gotten I I have been a pioneer in this kind of area, and I have uh, I have learned that there are many things in this place you should not trust, including, for example, bandits or anything hiding in the forest. Just be aware when you walk around. All right, I can accept that. Well, Thomas has stopped <laughs> seeing this forest as a forest a long time ago. It's it's now yes, definitely yes, a yeah. battlefield. Yes, your, your dark <laughs> background <laughs> certainly applies. More so than the protector of the forest who sets everything <laughs> allows it all to go on fire. You know, don't, don't, don't bash him. He's my friend. A wake of destruction in this way. Judge people for their actions, and he did great. Okay. <laughs> for Tempest, is definitely... Um, the survivor of the Dwarven games, you know, having to deal with an improvising situation so high stress or caution, you know, you never know what's just around the corner, what in that next room, or just in case the entire wall slides away and there's an entire array of cannons. All right. <laughs> you're, 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 you can roll for that. All right. Um, plus three. Okay. okay. Let's see here. Up ahead in less than 20 meters what appeared to be a trick of the light or perhaps some visual quirk caused by the rain and wind is actually a vast spider web spanning the entire highway it's currently vacant but as tempest and thomas notice that web is vacant because the spider is well camouflaged and about to pounce on you from the treetops Go ahead and shift back to the battle map as this giant spider comes crashing down onto the floor. Ah! Hi! And, and you may roll for initiative. That's good enough. We, we also have some other friends here to join us today. Oh, not those guys. Don't, don't suicide. Don't you suicide. <laughs> you have so much to live for. Trust yeah, in their self righteous suicide. <laughs> Hmm. I need more AoE. Uh, Ruination, go. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> go. <laughs> Alright, and I'll give each of these mobs a separate initiative roll. So, just to check, um, what's this spider engaged with? Uh, we'll say that he's not engaged with any of you right now, <laughs> if I can uh, move your character tokens. There Let's we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he just fucking like slams down like right next to you. And this spider, it's bigger than an ogre. Uh, oh. Well designed to be very well camouflaged so that it uh, presumably can surprise its prey. Uh, had uh, Tempest and Thomas not been aware, you might have just been distracted by the damn web and then surprise! How At can any rate, we want to protect this forest? It's ridiculous. Tempest, yeah. well, Tempest is my word. Too, as well. <laughs> good things here too. Imagine what a good highway to do. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to do an evasive strike on him. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. Tum tumbling strike. Tumbling strike. Okay. All right. So we're gonna roll one d twenty plus five plus one. Oh. That manages to hit the giant's web spider. Okay. One d eight plus five. For eight, eight points of damage. All right, you manage uh, to uh, slice one of its legs. Yes, you get to make a disengage check as a quick action. Yep, one d twenty. That yep. succeeds. You may disengage. And, <laughs> and, and as it looks, a quick action disengage lets you move again if I succeed. So even though I move to engage, I can move away. Yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that oh, guy. Right, there you go. What's safe? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what I'm imagining is you basically pinballing, rolling in, bouncing off. Hide yes. behind the wizard. 